Guys, we got ourselves another commission piece. Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher and I just paid off my student loan debt by flipping furniture. And now I am on a journey not only to help other teachers pay down some of their student loan debt, but also to save up enough money for a down payment on a house. Today I've got this dining set, this massive dining set. It's got six chairs, a bench, and a fold-out leaf table. I am going to be sanding for hours for this, but I'm super excited. You guys have asked for a dining set, so this came along and I knew that I had to do it. Let's get started with some cleaning. So this dining set is actually for a family friend of ours, and so they've got several kids, so when they found this table and chairs on Facebook Marketplace, they grabbed it and they said, can you please refinish it? So our goal is to sand down the tops of the top of the table and the seats of all of the chairs and the bench. And we're gonna restain those to kind of match the flooring in their new kitchen. And then the rest of the chairs and the legs of the table are going to be painted white. So we're gonna go for a little bit of a farmhouse look on these. And with this being a commission piece, I know that it is very difficult to price yourself um, ahead of time before you get started. Well, I ended up pricing this at $450. So I think that might be a little bit on the lower side, but after I am all done, I will add up all of my time and materials and I'll let you guys know how much I truly made per hour when finishing this set. I'm going to be using super clean to clean up the table and chairs and I'm just going to clean everything, wipe everything down before I get to sanding because I need to get all of this food and just oils and dirt and grime off of the surfaces. So I've actually flipped one other dining set before we started our YouTube channel and it's the set in my parents' kitchen. That's what kind of got me started on furniture flipping. So coming back to a dining set is kind of fun. Um, I know it was a lot of work back then and so uh, I think I've learned a little bit since then. So hopefully it won't take me as long that time I literally sanded every single surface down to the bare wood, which I know I will not need to be doing that for this set. Like I was gonna wait to clean um, until after I sanded because it's a little bit of an extra step because you have to clean again after sanding, but that's what I would have been rubbing into the wood and I'm glad that I decided to clean first. Okay, time for sanding. I've got my surf prep sander, and yes, you can use any old orbital sander or any sander that you could get at a hardware store. However, it's going to take you just a lot longer than, say, a surf prep would take you. This is their complete sanding system. I ordered it on my own back in February, and I'm Sorry guys, we got a little bit of some mowing next door, no problem, but anyway. And I didn't use it until just a couple of weeks ago and I didn't think I had the right adapter, but when I use it, I wish I would have started using it way, way, way long ago. If you are looking to invest in a sander, I recommend this one. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later once I get going sanding how this one is gonna go a lot faster than say my other orbital sander. So I'm gonna get started here. I'm using an 80 grit because remember, I am looking to sand away all of the varnish and stain color into down to this solid raw wood color. Oh. 
Okay, time on the bench. I took 18 minutes, so that's not so bad. This is all nice and smooth now, and we're gonna continue on, moving on to the chairs next. All right, so I just want to take a minute and do a little experiment with you guys. I'm gonna take my old Black & Decker Orbital Sander for the first little section of my table and see how long it takes me to sand it down. I've got the same grit, 80 grit sandpaper here. And then after I finish this side, I'm gonna go ahead and take, oh, my surf prep sander, same 80 grit, and we're gonna test to see how long it takes me with the orbital and how long it takes me with the surf prep. I just wanna show you guys and really do this test for myself to see and to show you that this little investment is truly gonna be worth it for you guys. So I'm gonna start with the Black & Decker. We're gonna set my timer to start and then we're gonna see which one is more efficient? Start timer now. I'm gonna do five minutes. So we just hit five minutes of sanding with the orbital sander. And now I'm gonna take my surf prep and sand for five minutes on this side and see if I can get farther than just about a quarter of the table here. So let's check out the surf prep. Okay, so over there, I got right about to this first notch. So we're gonna see if I could get a little farther with my surf prep in that five minute time. Here we go. Start it up. All right, as you can tell, I got double the distance in that same five minutes. So in essence, this is going to save you and cut half of the time uh, versus using the orbital sander. So is the surf prep a good investment? I would say yes. If you are wanting to get into furniture flipping, can you just stick with that orbital sander? Yes. If you are wanting to get into furniture flipping and you're planning on sanding things down to the bare wood, is surf prep going to save you time? Yes. So in, in essence, it's time saves money. So that investment into your own business is really worth it. I'm going to keep sanding. Alrighty, we are all done sanding three hours later. Just eliminating the finish on the tops of the table and the seats took me two hours with my surf prep and then I did another hour of scuff sanding 
the rest of the wood. I didn't need to go all the way down to the bare wood because that's just gonna get painted, but it's good to at least do a scuff sand so that your paint and primer can adhere better to the surface. Prep, prep, prep is gonna make your finished product look great and hold up better too. All right, so now that sanding's finished, I am going to be priming the parts where I'm gonna paint. I don't wanna get any paint on the parts where I sanded down to the bare wood. I'm gonna be staining that. So I'm gonna be covering all of that with this masking paper and some frog tape. I've never done this before. <laughs> You. I think that's it. Everything that's going to be stained is covered with paper and tape. It took a little bit longer than I thought. It was very tedious, but got it finished. So let's prime. All right, so I'm going to be priming with the Bins Shellac Face Primer because. This is solid wood and it has that stain on it, so I don't want anything popping through. So we're gonna go ahead and prime and then also the primer will then give me a base layer for my white paint. I'm gonna use a roller. So I've already prepped my rolling pan with some foil so that I can just have easy cleanup. And we're gonna pour it on in. And then I've also got my brush right there, just in case I need to get into those little crevices. So let's get started. Rollers are a little bit splattery too, so probably a good idea that I covered the entire seat and not just the edges because the roller will splatter paint everywhere. Okay, so I finished priming the other night and it got a little bit dark, but had to get it done. So we're back out here. The primer is dry and we're ready to get some paint on. I am going to lightly do some sanding with my sanding sponge and we are going to be applying some Rust-Oleum Linen White for the chairs. This is exactly what I used on our kitchen chairs and it's held up really awesome. And I've got four brush choices over here. This couple of zebra brushes and then a Jolie brush. I'm just not sure what I wanna use on these yet, but I know that I'll need these smaller ones to get into all of the crevices. And then I'm gonna be using my mister bottle as well to smooth out the paint. I'm hoping for two coats, but probably gonna need three. Let's get started. The sanding sponge is just going to smooth out the primer here and just make sure that we don't have any of these bumps. Also, I put the chair on these painter's pyramids because that way it'll allow me to get down all the way to the edge without getting it stuck on anything. And it just allows me to make sure I got full coverage. So I'll link these down in the description. They can actually hold a lot of weight. Sometimes they get a little scared, but it does hold a lot of weight if you use them right.
Okay, first coat is done, time. It has literally been two hours. Oh my gosh, this set is taking a while, but it's okay. I'm really confident that it's only gonna need one more coat of white, and this second coat of white should not take as long as this first coat did. There's just a lot to be covered on that first coat, and it's the same amount of coverage on the second coat, but it just will go by faster, I'm hoping. All right, but anyway, this has gotta dry, and you really wanna make sure that you check for drips anywhere. Um, especially with all of the slats, things like that, because uh, drips are not your friend. And when you're doing smaller spaces with sides on really close together, you just really got to make sure that you're using smaller amounts of paint. So we're going to let this dry for a bit. Actually, the chairs are dry, honestly, so I'm probably going to just go right over there and get started. Okay, so before I get to coat number two, I'm gonna take my little sanding block. I got 100 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna smooth out all of the paint here. I recommend that you do this before, I actually probably have a little bit too rough here. 100's pretty rough. I recommend that you do this before your second coat. This helps smooth out all brush strokes and things like that. This time, instead of doing one chair at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and do all six chairs and the bench and the table, and then get to second coat. We finished up on coat number two last night, and so that's had some time to dry. So my next step is to do coat number three. It's just gonna be a touch-up coat. I just need to make sure that there are no dark spots shining through. And I've got about this much of my can of Rust-Oleum left. I started with a new can, so I'm hoping that I'm not gonna have to open another one. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do another light sanding to get rid of some brush stroke lines and marks, and then I'll get to touching up. Also, I did confirm with the customer and she does want it distressed. So that actually helps me out a little bit because that means that I won't have to worry about necessarily the corners being all covered and things like that because I'm just gonna go back and take my sander and sand that away anyway. All right, I am finished with coat number three. Although I thought coats two and three would go faster than the first coat, I was wrong. The first coat went by pretty fast, I mean two hours, but then the second and third coat both took me about an two and a half hours each. So that's five hours right there. I know, I totally underpriced myself on this. Neem's shaking his head at me right now behind the camera, but 
Ah, uh, you live and you learn, and this just makes me even more excited for the summer because I am gonna get a sprayer, and I feel like this would go by so much faster with a sprayer. Anyway, my next step is to distress. Just lightly, though, because the customer was like on the fence, kind of, and I kind of suggested to be distressed just because it's a kitchen table, lots of kids, I know that it's gonna get dinged up and things like that. So I think already doing it in the natural spots just lightly will be perfect. That way, if anything does happen later on, that is fine and it'll just kind of blend in. So let's distress. All right, so for distressing, I'm gonna do it nice and light. So I'm gonna be using a sponge and a 320 grit sandpaper. And this is just gonna allow me to have a little bit more control than my bigger handheld sander. I'm just gonna go onto the spots where it'll probably get nicked up and damaged, I guess you could say damaged naturally. And so that's just gonna be basically on the corners and on the edges here um, of the top, but then mostly on the legs. So I'll just show you. It's cool because the dark wood from before, the color that it was before, is actually popping through. So that's really cool because it just gives it that extra dimension and that little pop. When you're distressing, you just kind of go with the flow and let your sander take it away. I tend to distress before the top coat because I need to um, or just in case I end up having to go back, like if I distress too much or something like that, then that'll be nice and easy for me to go back and touch up some paint where I may have gone a little overboard, things like that. All right, one distress, let's keep going. I've been working for about three hours after school here today. I'm gonna call it a night, pack everything in, and then we'll continue tomorrow. Our next step is to go ahead and get the top coat going on the paint because we need to get stain on so that we can top coat this stain as well. So top coat coming at you next. Okay, I am ready for the top coat. The top coat I'm gonna be using is the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear, flat, no shine, anything like that. And it's gonna be over the whole white part of the chairs. I'm probably gonna do two coats on the top, but the rest of it should be fine, especially since it's all distressed and things like that. One coat will be enough to seal it. And I know this because, like I said, I've used this exact paint, this exact top coat in our kitchen at my house, and we've had it for almost an entire year and no issues there. So let's get started. I'm gonna use a foam brush, two of them, one smaller one for the slats, and then one a little bit thicker one for the bigger sides. And you just really, really, really wanna make sure that none of this gets into clumps or pools anywhere because that's when you get the drying that just, it just doesn't look good because there's chunks and clumps and blah. So really be careful of getting too much top coat on but you just start and the little bit goes a long way. Whew, the top coat is all finished up. That took me another two and a half hours on the top coat. I am just ready to move on to the stain. So we are gonna be staining the seats of the chairs and the bench and then the top of this table here. And our goal is to get it to kind of not necessarily match this flooring piece that they're getting in their kitchen, but kind of just complement it a little bit. I've got two different stains that I picked up that I thought would probably work. So one of them is Provincial by Minwax and one of them is Special Walnut by Minwax. In between all of those coats, 
did a little testing on this piece of wood that I had. I'm just trying to figure out which one I think would match the best. I have got the provincial here, it's a bigger spot, and then I've got the special walnut here, and then I've got both here. And to be honest, I feel like, I'm just not sure really. I feel like the special walnut is too light and then the provincial just might be a little bit too dark, but maybe not. And then the both is just gonna be adding a lot of stain and layers to this. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna go with the provincial here because it just matches the best throughout all of these colors. This is the one that I originally thought I was going to go with until I saw that special walnut. So I picked up both, but we're going to just go for it and do the provincial. So I've got to take all of the papers off of these that I use to protect from the paint and then we'll get to staining. There we go. <laughs> Got a few helicopters in there. It's all good though. Got all the tape off and the paper, and now I'm just going around touching up any areas where I may have gotten some paint on the wood or it bled through the tape, things like that. Mostly around this back edge because it was really difficult to get any tape back in there. Before I apply the stain to the surface, I decided that I want the best look possible. So I'm gonna be using a pre-stain from Minwax. It's just a wood conditioner and it's going to lessen the blotchiness of the stain so that basically all of the wood takes the stain the same. So I'm gonna pop this open and then I'm gonna apply it with a brush and then it says it has to stay on there for five to 15 minutes before applying the stain. So. I'll get all this on here, go out to the chairs and bench, then I'll come back here and I'll stain, it'll be ready. All right, it's that time. We get to put some stain on. Just pop this baby open. So when you're applying stain, you wanna do kind of a little bit of over amount. That way when you're wiping it back, it will get to seep into the wood grain. I just don't wanna get too much on the edges there. That way it doesn't drip off the edges onto the paint. I'm using my lint-free rag here to wipe it back. That way no lint gets stuck in the stain. Ooh, that looks good. That took the stain really well. I've never stained a tabletop before, so this is a first for me, but I think it's turning out pretty good. I actually like, you know, the different Wood pieces have different grains and different colorings. Some of them are a little bit darker, but it's not blotchy. It's just, that's just kind of the look of the table. You could even see it in the raw wood, how some of them are darker, and so it's gonna take the stain a little bit differently, even when I use the conditioner. I think that is a pretty close match. Like again, we don't wanna match it exactly anyway, and so those, colors are gonna really complement each other.
that's gonna dry now. It's gonna dry for actually like four hours before I put any top coat on. So in the meantime, I'm gonna continue on with the stain on the seats of everything else. And it's kind of creepy. Creepy? I don't know if creepy is the word, but kind of drying funny and a little <laughs> scaring me a little bit. It's like dotty. So I'm hoping it's just actually drying and then it won't be like that when it's dry dry. I was a little bit worried about the stain kind of drying funky, but we let it dry for two days and it really only needed about four hours before putting the top coat on. But I think letting it dry those extra few days really helped it soak into the wood and dry to the max. So now I'm ready to put on some poly and you use poly when you are going to top coat stain. Polyurethane is different than say polycrylic. Polyurethane is gonna be better for oil-based stain coverage versus polycrylic, which is more, li more than likely a water-based top coat, which you could use for paint. So before I do the polyurethane on the top, I need to make sure that all of my dust is away because this is gonna be sealing everything and we don't want any dust underneath the top coat to later pop out. And I'll do the same thing on the chairs when I'm going out there. Right now we're gonna focus on the table. So with your wipe on poly, I'll link it down below. Uh, you're gonna wanna shake it up just in case any settles down in the bottom. Then you're gonna get a lint-free cloth and you're literally gonna wipe it on. This is the second time I use this. Actually, one of our supporters sent it to us. So thank you because this is so, so much easier than a can of poly. It says apply a liberal amount, liberal means a lot, to your cloth and then just wipe it on. I am gonna be doing two, maybe even three coats on this top of the table because this is gonna be a very high traffic area. So I want the utmost protection here and I think that one would just be too little and two might not just be enough. I wanna just make sure, especially since this is a custom piece and it's gonna be their dinner table. So I will still recommend to them that they have placemats or a tablecloth and things like that, just because that's how you're gonna get the most duration and quality out of your table. Make sure I get all along the edges here as well so much easier than brushing it on. So I'm gonna have to let this dry for a few hours before I put the next coat of poly on. So I will probably do that off camera since it is gonna be dark and late. Poly's on. We're gonna let that dry for a couple hours here before we get coat number two on, and then we'll come back to do a little bit of touch-ups. I ended up doing three top coats. So I did the one you guys saw, I did another one before I went to bed, and then I actually came out here before school this morning, and I did that third top coat. So overall, the top coat took me one hour, so that's an hour added on to the total time and we'll go over the total time at the very end. Right now I'm going to take this finishing pad and just give a nice little wipe over over all of the surface and what this does is this just smooths out anything. Um, I got this finishing pad on Dixie Bell's website so this just kind of eliminates any scratchiness, makes it all nice and smooth, but it's not as tough as sandpaper, so it's not gonna take any of the finish off or give it any of that dust. We are nearing the end of the process. The last and final step that I am going to do is to do any last minute touch-ups. So there is a couple of spots where I had gotten some stain on the white and I just wanna cover that up. I've just got a little bitty brush that can kind of get into those fine details. We're done, you guys. This dining set is 
finished. This is my second dining set, like I told you before. However, it's my first dining set in which I did the stain on the seats and the top of the table. I really think that it turned out amazing and I think that it'll look awesome in their brand new kitchen. I was so thankful that they chose me to do this set for them. That was a really fun thing to be a part of. And for commission pieces, I talk a lot about pricing. I am still new to the game, you guys. I know that I may seem very experienced and things like that, but truly, I'm not even a year in. So I am still learning every single project. That means that I still struggle with pricing my commission pieces. I priced this at $450, and I thought that that was gonna be an awesome price, and really, it's not that bad. After spending 16 hours with all of the work that needed to be done, I ended up with a total profit of $400 because I got the $50 worth of materials that I used. So between the $400 and the 16 hours, that broke it down to about $25 an hour. And that is a really good hourly rate if you ask me. However, I usually try to shoot for that $30 to $40 range when I am pricing out commission work. I did not think that this set was going to take me 16 hours. I'm not really sure why, because like I said, I've done a dining set before. However, I thought that the spindles, uh, the, the slats instead of spindles wasn't gonna take as long, but it took three coats of paint on top of the primer, and then I had to top coat, and then I had to sand, and then I had to do this and that and this and that, and overall, I just didn't think that it was gonna take me as long as it did. Anyway, I am so pleased with the way that this turned out. I've been getting lots of requests to do a dining set on my channel, so I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments if you have a dining set that you have done before, or maybe that you're going to do in the near future. I'd love to hear your guys' experiences. Do you guys like the spindles, or would you prefer slats, or would you prefer nothing in the back of the chairs, because I know that's what I would prefer. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to get subscribed down below to follow along on our journey of helping teachers, helping each other, and becoming a great FFT community, as well as following along on our journey to earn money to put toward a down payment on a house. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the flip side.